Welcome to iLectronline. Now in this example, we're going to try to find the general solution when the y term is missing. Now you may say, well, that's not a big problem. I know this is a problem with constant coefficients. I can simply take the characteristic equation and find the solutions rather readily. But what we're going to do here is use a slightly different technique. Well, maybe not so slightly different, but quite a different technique. But that technique will also work when the coefficients are not constants, when the coefficients are actually functions of the variable. So what we're going to do here is use a more general approach to finding the solution of an equation that looks like this when the y term is missing. First, what we're going to do is we're going to do a substitution. We're going to let u equals y prime, which means that u prime is equal to y double prime. And then we're going to make that substitution in here. So the equation will look as follows. It will look like u prime minus 3 times u is equal to 0. And now we've turned that equation into a first order equation. The general format of that first order equation will look like this. It will look like u prime plus p as a function of, let's say, t times u equals g as a function of t. And notice, of course, then we have non-constants as coefficients, and we still have a function also on the right side. If we now want to find the general solution to that, we can find what we call the integrating factor. And so we'll call that mu, and the integrating factor is going to be equal to e to the integral of p of t dt. Now in this particular case, we can see that p of t is a minus 3, so this can now be written as e to the integral of minus 3 dt, and of course that would be equal to minus 3t, so this is equal to e to the minus 3t. That's the integrating factor, so let's just write it as integrating factor, like that. Now, to find the general solution, we can then say that the general solution u, as a function of t, is equal to 1 over the integrating factor, which is what we have over here, times the integral of, and then we plug in, well, we have the integrating factor, we have mu of t times g of t, or that would be the function, in this case, g of t is going to be 0. And if we put parentheses around that, plus a constant of integration, which we'll get regardless of what we have in here. Well, let's plug that in and see what we get. So u as a function of time is equal to 1 over mu sub naught. That would be 1 over e to the minus 3t, which of course goes to the numerator and becomes e to the plus 3t times the integral of u of t, which is e to the minus 3t, multiplied times g of t, which is 0. And of course, the integral of 0 is still going to be 0. But we're going to, and that would be times dt, of course. We want to have a dt in there. And that we're still going to have a constant of integration, like this. Which means that u of t, when we bring this to the denominator and we have a constant, is going to be equal to c times e to the 3t. And so this is the general solution of the first order differential equation. Now we need to go back and find y. So if u equals y prime, then y equals the integral of u. So that we can come up over here and we can say that y as a function of time is equal to the integral of u of t dt. So we have the antiderivative here. This is equal to the integral of, we have c e to the 3t dt, which is equal to 1 over 3 c e to the 3t. This disappears, and of course we have another constant of integration. Let's call that c2. Now 1 over 3 times c, simply call that c1. So this becomes equal to c1 e to the 3t plus c2. And that would be the solution to our original second order differential equation. Again, you may say, well, why did I go through all this trouble making the substitution, turning it into a first order, solving it like this? Well, the reason for that is because this actually works for a more general case where there are non-constant coefficients and there is indeed a function on the right side of the equation. So it works for all those different types when the y term is missing. 
Now, just to show you that this could have been solved, of course, much more easily, we'll take the characteristic equation of that particular initial equation. So we get r squared minus 3 times r is equal to 0. We solve for the roots here, so we get r times r minus 3 is equal to 0, which means we have two roots, r1 equals 0, and the second root, r2, is equal to 3. Using these two roots, the general equation then looks as follows. y is a function of t is equal to c1 e to the r1t plus c2 e to the r2 times t, and plugging in those values, we get y as a function of t is equal to c1 times e to the r1. Now, e to the r1 would be 0, so that's e to the 0, which is 1, plus c2 e to the r2t, which is equal to 3, 3t, like that. And notice we get the exact same result as we did before. The only difference here is that we have c1 e to the 3t plus c2. Here we have the c's turned around, but it doesn't really matter. c1 and c2 are any two constants. So you can see that, yes, very easily we could have used the traditional method by using the characteristic equation. However, this is a good example of how the same result can be obtained using this method, and this method also works if you have an equation that doesn't have constant coefficients. It'll come in handy in the future, and that's how it's done.